Now, New South Wales Premier Chris Minns has announced he's keeping open Australia's largest coal-fired power plant, Araring, to ensure there's enough energy in the grid. Former New South Wales Energy Minister, who's now in opposition, Matt Keane, criticised this decision last week. That AEMO, the system operator, have said the cheapest way to uh, ensure that we get reliable and affordable electricity is to build new renewables with storage, with firming. That means Snowy 2.0 is a vital piece of that. And Liberals MP Kelly Sloan tweeted, this is coal paying for coal. Could have been coal paying for more renewables, more solar panels on people's homes, subsidies for households switching to electric appliances. She says Labor keeping... So, I mean, this is just fascinating because you have Chris Minns, New South Wales Labor Premier, who is now extending the life of Araring, the state's largest coal-fired power station, while you have Kelly Sloan and Matt Keane from the Coalition who want to shut it down. Well, energy expert Cameron O'Reilly authored a review of the state's green energy transition, and it was this review that Chris Minns based his decision to keep Araring open, and Cameron joins me now. Thank you so much for your time. Pleasure, Sherry. Did your report warn of blackouts? Is this why the Premier has made this decision? Well, the Premier asked us to consider were there increased reliability, which means, in, in some terms, risks of blackouts and affordability risks from Araring closing in 2025. And our review, our company's review, um, and most recently, the Australian Energy Market Operator found that there were increased risks if it closed around that time. So, yes, we recommended that the plant should be extended. And now it's up to the owner of the plant, Origin Energy, and the government to work out the terms of any and extension. Did you, did you put a, a, a timeline on that? You know, how many more years that the state needs this coal-fired power station to stay open to ensure that we do have enough energy in the system? Well, I think that is a matter for the parties, the government and Origin, but it will be guided by how much do we have on the supply side, but how much is demand is there going to be? And you don't take risks with an electricity system. You've got to keep them in balance. Mm. And remember that... An electricity system has to deal with extremes. It reaches its highest demand times when it's 45 degrees in Penrith or when it's freezing cold in winter and you don't have much solar generation because there are short days. So the system has to be able to deal with those stresses and that's where reliability has to be thought about because mm. the interesting perspective on climate change is, yes, those extremes are going to get worse, so it's likely that you're going to have to have a system that can deal with those extremes. And in March this year, we had the highest ever demand in New South Wales on a March day. So the peak demand is not coming down and you have to allow for that. So when you look at those days where there are extreme weather conditions, how vulnerable is our system? Well, I mean, on the whole, we have a very reliable electricity system and we all want to keep it that way. Mm. Because remember, we're going to start relying on electricity for our cars. We're going to start relying... Um, net zero is premised on more use of electricity than the removal mm. of gas... So you cannot compromise on reliability because it's critical to, you know, a whole lifestyle. And, of course, it's also an essential service. And if it goes up, it affects people on lower incomes more. So it's regressive. Mm. So you really can't compromise on either of those things. So if it's perceived to be a risk-averse approach, um, let's hope we keep it that way. Mm. Look, given that's your view... Do you think the progression towards renewable energy in New South Wales has been too hasty? No, I, look, it's bipartisan support for the growth of renewables in New South Wales and we're not questioning that. Mm. But, you know, those renewables are premised on building new transmission, which is never quick. And then some of the comments there talked about rooftop solar. Well, we supported more uptake and use of rooftop solar. That's a fact of life. People are doing it. But anything, every project in infrastructure at the moment is facing delays, cost blowouts, the 3.6 unemployment mm. employment across the nation. There are skill shortages. And see the evidence of Snowy 2, Marinus Link, this, this week. Uh, if you were relying on new stuff to replace stuff that's going out and you get it wrong, there are high consequences to mm. that. All right, Cameron, thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Pleasure.